Views expressed by Casters Guild members are only the opinions of that member, and that could change from day to day. Guild members may use mature language, but that in no way means they are mature. Listener discretion is advised. Yes, we're talking about Wizards of the Coast again. The European Union has something to say about freemium games, and Ralph Macchio versus Jackie Chan? That's the spell we're casting tonight on Casters Guild. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Casters Guild. I'm your guild master, Rick Perry, aka Crashman. And I am your guild master, Baron Kane. And uh let's see, they kind of were in the dregs of the nickname. Um a bumper shoot? Why what's a bumper shoot? It, you, look, you're the one who said it. <laughs> it, it. Look, they give us these nicknames at the beginning of the show, and they just pulled us on at the bottom of the bucket. I don't know what this is. Yeah, yeah, it's it's getting late in the season. Oh, Jesus. They're, they're not all going to be winners, okay? No, no, no. <laughs> Speaking of not a winner... Are we doing it? Welcome to our newest segment, Miss the Mark. Yeah, the, the segment of our show that we are positive Wizards of the Coast has heard about and are now just providing content for us. Which, which we appreciate. It's the one thing about WotC that we appreciate. Right, right, right. Thanks, man. <laughs> wizard the one wizard the one wizard from the other coast from the other coast <laughs> <laughs> you know what let's start with what happened we all know it's it's D's 50th anniversary and they had you know their great big D D or direct and they announced all the things that they're going to be doing yeah but then the ceo of hasbro chris cox emphasis on cock was speaking at a Goldman Sachs conference. Boy, that should say it all right there, really. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to go over a few quotes from that speech. And uh, I would love to credit where I got these quotes from, but I've gathered them from a few different spots on the Internet. Yeah, our, our main one that we kind of are using is futurism. At least that's where I got the uh, screenshot from. And they are also providing quite a bit of information in their article, too. So, you know, if you want to look them up, go for it. So, first of all, Chris Cox casually mentions that inside of development, we've already been using AI. Now, now let's stop there. I I want to jump in here. All right. I would like to say that there are great usages for AI. Sure. Especially, like, if you are using your own material and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So, this comment in and of itself, not really a... Not really too bad, right? You know what? I I would agree with you because AI is just a tool. And if used right. correctly, there's nothing wrong with it per se. But... Right. right, exactly. But I would like to draw attention to the fact that a while ago in a <laughs> Magic the Gathering promotion, <laughs> they got caught using AI art. Right. And their response... And I quote, what was it? What was it? Magic. Hold on. Hold on. I bet it was like, you know, hey, we're sorry. (laughs) Magic and D&D have been built on the innovation, ingenuity and hard work of talented people who sculpt these beautiful creative games. Hold on. Did you say magic and D&D? I did. Huh? As such, we require artists, writers and and creatives contributing to Magic TTG and the D&D TTRPG to refrain... Did you say writers? <laughs> yes. Did you say writers? Yes, okay. I did. Cool, 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 cool. To refrain from using AI generative tools to create final Magic or D&D products. Wow. Sounds like a pretty hard stance against AI. That does to me, too. I mean, at least... But again, though, you know, maybe they're using AI for, I don't know, machine learning based stuff or proprietary stuff. You know, there's there's no way that they are going to be using it in the like the more playful elements of AI. Sure. You know what I mean? Like like, campaign development or character development or story (laughs) ideas. Let's go ahead and check out some more of the. This is more of the quote, shall we? Okay, cool, 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 cool. Go, Chris, go for Chris it. Cox continues to say, we will deploy it 
talking about AI, significantly right. and liberally internally as both a knowledge worker aid and as a development aid. Oh, well, okay. So, okay. Oh, sure, sure. What? He continues to say. <laughs> uh-huh. The themes around using AI to enable user-generated content, using AI to stream new player introduction, using AI for emergent storytelling. I think oh. you're going to see that not just our hardcore brands like D&D, but also multiple of our brands. Oh, that sounds bad. <laughs> oh, wait, I found another quote. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It says, I'm probably more excited, though, about the playful elements of AI. I play with probably 30 or 40 people regularly. Bullshit. <laughs> There's not a single person who doesn't use AI somehow for either campaign development or character development or story ideas. Also bullshit. That's a clear signal that we need to be embracing it. Biggest bullshit. Wow. <laughs> okay. Once again. I'm not wow. sure I have anything new to contribute to this conversation, but I'm more than a little heated. Yeah. And for Come multiple on. reasons. So, like, feel free to interrupt my rant at any time because it's going to be a rambly rant. And I'm not 100% sure where I'm going with it yet, but we're going to sure. find it as we get along. Okay. Right. Well, we have, to, we have time to fill. <laughs> so, the first thing since D&D &D 5e that I personally got pissed at Watsi over was the Hidozi. Sure. Okay. Yeah. It's an easy thing to get pissed about. But most people cite the biggest mistake that they made. The first big mistake they made was attempting to repeal the OGL. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest problems with the OGL was the fact that Anyone who created anything D&D &D related, Watsy could just come in and then go, that's ours now because it's D&D. &D. And people were very upset about that. And rightfully so. Now, yeah. I think we all know how AI works. If they are creating these AI systems in order to bring players in and generate story and characters mm -hmm. and art... What do you think they're feeding these engines with? It's a good question. Best case scenario, and it's not even really a good case scenario. Let me be very clear about it. Mm -hmm. Best case scenario is that they are taking all of their old material and they're pumping it into the engine. See, but that's not enough to feed a generative AI. It's, it's not enough information. Um, okay. If you have any idea how AI works, and I'm not downing you if you don't, Oh, you know I mean, no, need, I know how I, I know how, what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need way more <laughs> than just your old content there. So what are they going to take? Player generated content. Yeah, they're going to take third party content. They're going to take all this content that people got upset that they were going to take in the OGL and they're going to take it anyway and make it theirs using generative AI. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep, I, I believe that. So I, I watch a YouTuber called Dungeons and Discourse. Yep. And um, that's exactly what they were bringing up it is like it just I was actually watching the video just before I got on here mm -hmm. and it was, you know, they were talking about anything that is like if you're using D&D &D Beyond, anything that you use on that anything that you use AI to generate or modify or anything like that, any of that can be fed back into the machine, you know, capital T, capital M, the machine. We rage against it. It's fun. <laughs> um, but it, 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 it's just fed back and it's going to like, you know, your, your character will be owned by Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. That, I mean, that, there, that's not even an exaggeration. Really. Any, any homebrew that you create, and I am not naive enough to think that they're only going to use the stuff that people feed into D&D &D Beyond and Sigil. Well, I mean, like, even the shit that they generate using this stuff is going to be owned by D&D. &D. Yeah. I'm, so it's not even necessarily stuff they're feeding into it. It's stuff that they are getting from it. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, like, okay, so yeah. right now D&D &D Beyond has a great big homebrew section. Uh-huh. 
where people can create homebrew, give it to D&D Beyond, that way other people can use their homebrew. And people are bringing up the fact that, the, you know, this stuff all belongs to WotC pretty much now and is going to be feeding the AI generative machines. What I'm saying is I'm not naive enough to believe that they're only using that, that they're only using the data that they're getting from their own platforms. Oh, yeah. No, no. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I thought that was a given. I wasn't trying to counterpoint or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. I, I didn't think so. I just thought you, you might have misunderstood what I was saying. Oh, no, um, no, no, no. No, I I definitely agree. It, yeah. And it, it's definitely going to be a problem. Yeah, I think they're going to be going out to all quarters of the internet and like anything that has ever been hashtag D&D &D, mm -hmm. or even hashtag TTRPG or whatever is going to be fair game as far as they're concerned in order to feed their own generative AI yeah. bots. Yeah, and think of it this way. What's going to happen if Hasbro folds? It's essentially everything that is D&D &D, mm -hmm. is D&D &D won't be able to exist outside of Wizard of the Coast, Hasbro, what what have you, because of all of that generated stuff. Yeah, nothing or, from this point forward anyway. Yes, correct, correct. And, you know, what happens again? Hasbro folds. How's your uh, how's your Yahoo music account? How's that doing for you? <laughs> Anybody who puts all their money into this sigil platform, into D&D &D Beyond, into buying their digital books, buying their digital content, just feeding more and more money into this, if it ever goes down, it's all gone. Yep. It's all gone. So, yeah, I, this is like, I mean, believe me, I, I get the appeal of digital media. It is convenient mm -hmm. but people putting all of their ducks into the basket that is digital media yes i know i mix some metaphors there that's how i roll but it doesn't make sense to me and it never and it, 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 it that cannot be the old man in me that's like oh technology is scary no it's it's <laughs> i've seen it happen we we, yeah. we have had shit we've bought Music on platforms. We have gotten, you know, m movies on platforms. It, it and, and it's and it's gone now. Our own podcast was on Google Podcasts. Yeah, and it's just gone now. Luckily, oh, yeah. we spread it out and put it yeah. a couple different places. But Google yeah, Podcasts if, is now just gone. Imagine if we had just done Google Podcasts. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we got all our backups and shit, but yeah. But there's plenty of people, I'm sure, who use Google Podcasts as the main way to get their podcasts, and they had, like, all their favorites saved. They had things downloaded, possibly purchased. I'm not going to lie. I thought you were about to use that as a segue into our ad, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what? No, way too early. Wait. <laughs> it's like you, the tone in your voice, I'm like, all right, tvillain.com? What? <laughs> physical media is the shit. Buy your t-shirts physically. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's better than digital media? A stick. <laughs> you know what's better than a stick? <laughs> My own ad transitions have become a meme. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, oh, man, but like, I've been hearing about how cool the new 2024 rule set is. I've been seeing the awesome features that they plan on implementing into Sigil, which will undoubtedly be the best VTT to play D and D with. Mm -hmm. And yet they piss me off so much with thing after thing that they're doing with Mark after Mark that they choose to miss mm -hmm. that. Like, I can't even get excited about that. I can't even get on here and be like, Oh, look at these cool new rules. Cause I'm not going to fucking buy it. Yeah. I mean, and to be fair and I really shouldn't, do this all the as much as i do but it, it, to be fair 
Wizards of the Coast has paid enough bootlickers to sing their praises. They don't need us. Yeah, true enough. There's a bigger names than us. Bigger names than we will ever be. They have paid to lick their boots. So I'm fine. Though Wizards completely prepared to rescind that statement. Oh, man, I, I honestly thought the funniest thing and like the most outrageous thing I was going to be able to talk about that came out of the D&D Direct, because technically this came out after the D&D Direct. Like, I thought we were going to be like dunking on the D&D Direct. I honestly did. And like, I thought it was going to be dunking on the fact that like they put an Optimus Prime miniature into Sigil mm-hmm. and that like it's going to be the new kids are going to be like, oh, that's the guy from Fortnite. And like fucking it was going to be like the Fortnite of VTTs where like it's just going to be like collaboration after collaboration where people are spending money mm-hmm. on Sigil, which apparently one of Wati's employees actually did say that they want it to be the Fortnite of VTTs, which yep. is fucking yep. ridiculous. Yep. And then they pull this this AI shit. Now I feel like they're trying to replace us, Baron. Are. They are 100%. And you know what? Not going to lie, sometimes I I have to stop and think, you know what? Maybe it's not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> but But I mean, it's never going to be it's never going to be as good. It's not. There's there's no way. There's no way that you can replace your friendly local dungeon master. Yeah. And I, and I feel like that's what it's all about. I think they're like, oh, we don't need the dungeon master to tell the story anymore. We're tired of the dungeon master being the only person to buy our products. So rather than the dungeon master buy all our products and tell the story, we'll tell the story and let all the players buy the products because that's a bigger market. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want them to... I don't want anybody to over monetize my hobby. However, there are ways to monetize that without it being soulless. God, uh, that was gross even saying, but you know what I mean? I mean, they were they're doing it. Sigil could have been it if they had just just did that. The new rule books could have been it if it was just that. If it wasn't for this AI shit, this you know, attempting to repeal the OGL, sicken the fucking Pinkertons on people. If it wasn't for all these other things we keep talking about, if they were just like, oh, we want to start releasing new rule sets every once in a while, I'd have been like, okay, that seems a little, you know, season passy, but okay. And they were just like, hey, we've got this new virtual tabletop. It's included in with your D&D Beyond subscription. You can use the old rule set or the new rule set. And we're going to be releasing new stuff that you can buy for it. New sets of dice, new miniatures. You don't have to, you know what I mean? You can use your, you know, little tokens to represent whatever and use your imagination. But if you want the Astarian figure with the Boulder's Gate collaboration, then you have to buy that separately. And I feel like they would have made a ton of fucking cash. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I think that they are underestimating what they could have done with less effort mm-hmm. and less fucking grossness and not even other different things it's like stuff they're doing now Mm -hmm. just don't do the gross stuff too right and i i really think that they should keep a physical option i think that you agree as well yeah um but let's just say that let's just say that they don't do a physical option right and they go they go completely digital right Mm -hmm. they should cut down the cost yeah the digital book should definitely be cheaper than the physical book. Yes, a hundred percent. And you know what? <laughs> they're using digital books, right? Mm-hmm. And they're using AI, right? Mm-hmm. Why is it still so fucking expensive? We know why. We know why. That's yeah, a redundant. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, a rhetorical yeah, yeah. Yeah, question. B- fucking profit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. the reason but, why. But but and then don't talk. Don't come at me. Not you. But don't come at me. <laughs> Because, you know, you're like, oh, well, you know, it still costs. It's like, you know what? OK, so Guild Officer Billy dropped in a uh, an article for us to, to, to peruse over. And um, it's talking about basically how the video game industry is uh, maximizing consumer spending. Are you talking right? about the, the case over in uh, the EU? Yes, yes. And, but this is, you know, not just this is not just in the European Union. You know, you know, it's not. This is just 
yeah being it's just taken that's where the, the that's where it, being union. yeah that's where it's going to court i mean like this right. the, these practices exist globally it's just the european oh. union are the ones who are like fucking right we should take this to court <laughs> Right, exactly. Now, and then just for full disclosure, this is from the European Consumer Organization website. But they they bring up some fair points. One is consumers cannot see the real cost of digital items leading to overspending. So you got you got something that is 20 bucks to download, but then once you get a certain kind of currency or whatever, then you find out that this thing is actually more than what you bought or a different kind of currency because mm-hmm. you know there are online games that have different kinds of currency that you can buy which is infuriating right you know and then that just leads to people just spending more and more yeah or there's um, like the one thing you want that's only 99 cents but you have to buy the currency in bundles of five dollars at minimum mm-hmm. yep. and then so you buy the five dollar currency you buy the little 99 cent thing but then you buy a few other 99 cents thing and then you see something you want that's $2 but you've only got $1 of your currency left so then you buy another $5 worth of currency that way you can make up the difference now you got an extra 3 4 bucks sitting around yep so you buy a oh. few more things and it just it's a cycle and i'm going to point out again here that this is the stuff that they suspect they have they have identified it mm-hmm. they know that this is happening so i'm going to say that before i say this next thing Companies' claims that gamers prefer in-game premium currencies are wrong. Yeah. Duh. Again, I know I've got, I have have those bootlickers out there that are going to say whatever, you know, oh, well, you know, there are a lot of people out there. So, no, no. The majority of gamers do not prefer that. Mm-mm. Especially when it's, when it's confusing, when it's like, yeah. oh, spend $5 of real money to get 7,500 gems. And it's like, why you got to make it confusing for the conversion? Right. Exactly. Why couldn't five dollars be like five hundred gems? That way, I know a gem is a penny. And then consumers are often denied their rights when using premium in-game currencies, as uh, tied to unfair terms favoring game developers. So they are essentially, again, not being transparent. Yeah. With people and denying them their rights to using, you know, what they have. And then, and this is this is a complete. Big duh, but they are showing that children are even more vulnerable to these manipulative tactics, which I think is a big reason why D and D is linking their shit to Fortnite because they know they they can get money out of these Fortnite kids. Yeah, and I use Fortnite kids loosely, not necessarily kids who play Fortnite, but they have that mindset. I mean, um, there are there are quote unquote Fortnite kids that are now adults. That's how long Fortnite yes has that's has, true. has been out. Yep. Data shows that children in Europe are spending, on average, 39 euros per month on in-game purchases. That's per month on just the in-game purchases. It's insane. While, while they are among the ones playing the most, they have limited financial literacy and are easily swayed by virtual currencies. Which, I believe, can be, can be tempered by parental involvement. Sure. But still. And these, I, I'd just like to point out, Just to kind of bring it back, these are the business models that Hasbro is trying to duplicate for Mm D&D. The same business practices that freemium games and a bunch of video game companies have been using for years that now Europe is like, hey, there's something wrong with these practices. These practices are not okay. D&D is diving headfirst straight into it Mm -hmm. on top of all the other bullshit. Crazy, man. I almost got that fucking ampersand tattooed on myself permanently. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like one of those Harry Potter fans who got a Deathly Hollows tattoo. Uh, to be fair, most of those people don't regret it. Uh, fair. I have heard from several tattoo artists that's like their number one cover up, though. Oh, really? Okay. It's like Deathly Hollows tattoos. It's like the, the that's... number one thing that they're covering up nowadays. That's funny. But fucking, fucking Cox, man. This the CEO of Hasbro who's just ready to like rake all of us over the coals for the sake of a few extra bucks. Yep. It infuriates me that this is the business model that's going to work because it shouldn't like it. Like what should work is taking care of your player base. What should be happening is like the entire player base of D&D should be furious and leaving and going to other systems. 
that's that's not what's going to happen. D and D has it, become so mainstream and so mm-hmm. you know synonymous with like the TTRPG hobby that like people literally think they don't have another option, right? Or they've got their head so buried in the sand they don't see all the other evil shit that Hasbro's doing, or they just don't care. They're like, shut up and let me play my fun little pretend game about dragons. Which I mean, fair enough. I mean, like it's 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 all about escapism, honestly. And there's enough more serious shit going on in the world, but like, it's just not how it should work. Well, if anything, this is, again, another good indication of people needing to get out there, needing to find their their independent TTRPG people, their, you know, other, I mean, even other big game people like Paizo, you know, they're not independent, but for fuck's sake, it's at least a better option. Yeah, um, at least they're not using generative AI. And I mean, what was the other last one I, we were fucking pissed about? I, I'm losing track <laughs> of how many things they're not they using AI on. for their art. They're not using AI to generate stories or characters or or anything like that. It, 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 as far as we know, at least there there's an awful big spotlight on Wizards of the Coast right now. So who the fuck knows? But. They aren't forcing you into a new rule, rule set because you use their digital tools. Correct. That's um, the last one. That's the last one that I was forgetting. So, they I don't, mean, yeah. They've never set the Pinkertons on anyone. That's fair. That's also fair. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I would say that, it, like I said, if, if anything was going to get you to go out and check out some of these other TTRPGs, I hope this is it. But, a, as I was saying on X, Twitter, for, for those of us who, who don't you know, follow the uh, name change. I, you know, I, I recently got into, I don't want to say a heated argument, but it was a very confusing argument about the use of AI where I was told, oh yeah, AI worries me, but everybody's using it. And so it should be okay. We should get used to it, but it worries me. And I'm like, what? That's... Or, or the, no, I agree with you, but I, huh? I, I want you guys to know that, you know, just because you're playing D and D, you know that's not something that is a deal breaker for me. I'm not going to not be friends with you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because you're playing D and D. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's like, not a thing. You know, as long as you're not voting for Trump, I'm fine. I, I feel like that argument could be like made in a smarter way. Like I get, like it's kind of like one of those things where it's like you know, accept the things you cannot change, kind of way. There's yeah, nothing we can it. do I, to stop AI, so, like, you know, do right. what you can to well, try I mean, to get used to it, but that doesn't mean I have to like it. Right. Well, their their argument their argument was, you know, oh, I'm paraphrasing. I mean, I left it up on my account, so if you want to go look at the discussion, that's fine. Be warned, I'm not famous enough to make my Twitter account wholesome yet, so, you know, get fucked. But it was basically like, oh, well... You know, it's cool that you don't want to have anything to do with wizards, but, you know, if you don't want to have anything to do with wizards, have you checked out the steel industry and all the stuff that technology has replaced people with there? And it's just like, that's not even a comparison. It's not. It's like, te- technology has stepped in on steel to keep people from being fucking killed. Mangled. Yeah. Yeah, replace those people. <laughs> but at the same time, I really wish that our work system was set up in a way that if we did have to replace people, we were able to give these people training to go and do something else. Right. Let's just say you have someone who is doing this thing. Technology steps in and re- quote unquote replaces them. That company should fucking train them and put them someplace else. The fact that they fire people for shit like that is beyond me. It's beyond me. It's like, yes, we don't need your uh, position anymore. So bye. Like, wow. Mm. We just had a pizza party where we were talking about how big of a family we are. Mm hmm. And about how crazy. about record profits. And yeah, it's fuck. all thanks to you guys. But, you know, get fucked, I guess. So, yeah, I, I don't think I don't think that the problem is technology in some cases. I think the problem is the job industry, which should be changed. But in terms of technology coming in and taking people's jobs yeah fucking saves lives yeah please do but it shouldn't be coming in and replacing art it shouldn't be coming Mm -hmm. in 
And storytelling is art. I don't care what anybody fucking says. Storytelling is art. Absolutely. And, yes. you know, you shouldn't have an AI coming in and doing this. Because that is taking artists' jobs. And l- let me be clear, too. Have we ever heard of, like, I don't know, a, a starving architect or a starving warehouse worker? Or, no. The, the term is starving artist. Mm-hmm. Artists don't get paid a lot. It is hard for them to get a fucking job. Because people don't patron the arts the way they should. So when these jobs come along, they shouldn't be fucking taken away by technology. Right. And the fact that some people are okay with this really tells me how they feel about our artists. One, about the people who have been storytelling for them for life and, you know, and the art that they have appreciated through the years. The amount of give a fucks that are lacking is staggering. Staggering. And like I said, you know, AI can be fun. AI can be useful, but it it should not be replacing people. Mm -hmm. Especially, like you said, in the arts. Mm hmm. Especially like, especially with the level that it's out right now, it just blows my mind that like people think people look at what AI is generating right now and they're like, oh, yeah, that could totally replace a digital artist or, oh, yeah, that could totally replace a a writer. And I'm like, have you read what AI is producing? Right. Hmm. But you know what? Never uses AI art. Oh, we're doing it now. (laughs) Tvillain.com. Yes! (laughs) Yes! <laughs> T-Villain is a t-shirt site where you'll find a killer limited edition shirt being sold for $13 only while supplies last. Every Monday, the site features a new design by a new artist. We would tell you what's featured right now, but by the time you hear this, it's already changed. They choose the most ingenious designs that reflect everything evil and villainy, as well as works pertaining to anything artistic, pulp style, lowbrow, pop culture, TV, movies, music, video games, comics, etc. All things cool and evil, basically. To check them out and help out Casters Guild, click our link in the description. With all of these things that might make you look into a system other than D&D, I gotta let you know that Daggerheart has announced its official release window for spring of 2025. Oh, hell yeah. And you can now pre-order the starter sets. The Daggerheart core set is going to be $60 and is going to include the 300-page rulebook, 279 illustrated cards for, like, you know, the Ancestries communities subclasses domains all that good stuff so everything you need to play everything you need for character creation everything you need to create a world examples tutorials all that good stuff 60 bucks which i will say when we when we demoed or we did the beta for dagger heart i was mm-hmm. concerned about these cards yes and the fact that it was going to be like they were going to be expensive but 60 bucks for like the main rule book and 280 cards and a nice case to keep it all in. Not bad. Yeah. Then there is the core set limited edition, which of course, of course still includes the 300 page rule book, but it has alternate artwork because it is the limited edition. It includes the same collection of cards that the core set does, but you'll also get a GM screen with a bunch of quick rate reference tables on it that actually wraps around the box magnetized in order to keep everything together. Dang. You get a pad of pre-printed character sheets, a set of nine dice with a nice drawstring bag for it. This is more the the DM set of dice for Daggerheart that's got all the different die types in it for that like the monsters use cuz you know the the player characters just use their D12s. Mhm. And it comes with another drawstring bag that has a set of 102 acrylic tokens for tracking, you know, the different things that happen in Daggerheart. And that's going to be 150. Okay. Which I'll, I'll say not bad for everything that you get. Yeah, all things considered, when you look at, let's just say, what do you need to play D&D? Realistically. Well, what do you need to run D&D should be the question. Sure. And for that, well, you well, need your your player's handbook, your monster manual, and your dungeon master's guide. Right. And that, that that's not counting any 
of the the tidbits that go along with that. Yeah, dice. How how much does that come to, uh, come up to? Uh, just those three books. You know what? Yeah. You know what? We're not even going to ballpark it. I am going to go to Amazon.com right now. Mm-hmm. And we're not even talking the 2024 rules because those books aren't out yet. Right. I'm going to see what they sell the set with those three books in it for. 170 bucks. $170. Mm-hmm. Currently on sale for 140 to be fair. But, you know, retail price, 170 hmm. And again, that's not counting any kind of tokens. Mm-mm. It's not counting any kind of dice. Nope. And yes, I know that the cards are kind of required for. Are, would you say that they're required or can one do it without them? Everything that is on the cards is in the rule book. So just like in D&D, if you want to get spell cards, it's much easier than writing right. down what's on every one of your spells. With right, Daggerheart, exactly. you do have these cards, and that is much easier than writing down everything that would be on one of these cards. But mm-hmm. you don't need them. Okay. So there's that too. So let's just throw in let's just throw in some cards. And uh let's just say a case to hold them all in. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a good deal to me. Yeah. Cause to get the same thing out of DD, you'd basically need to buy all three of those books plus every spell card that is currently available or at least all the spell cards that are available in the original player's handbook plus a token set which they exist for D&D you can go out and get token sets for D&D plus a set of dice plus a DM screen no I won't say plus a DM screen because that is in the three book set plus that pad of pre-printed character sheets that they sell separately and Mm -hmm. that is what you're getting in this dagger heart core set for the same price well less than just the books for D&D Right. And can confirm from trying it out, it is a decent system. Yeah, no, I I enjoyed it. Obviously, it has its, you know, issues, but what game system doesn't? What, you know, homebrew isn't going to be able to, you know, make it more, you know, enjoyable for you. Right. But yeah. Any problem that Daggerheart has is a whole lot easier to solve than those that D&D has. Yeah. As long as we're mad at WotC, let's go ahead and talk about some other things that they're doing right now. You can decide whether or not it's a good thing. But Magic the Gathering has announced its newest Secret Layer cards. Are you familiar with Secret Layer? I am not. Secret Layer is basically where it's Magic the Gathering Fortnite, <laughs> to be honest. They basically oh. take a bunch of popular cards that people already use in their decks and create basically proxies for them that feature popular characters. Like they've done, like Fallout Secret Layer, My Little Pony Secret Layer, Assassin's Creed Secret Layer, Hatsune Miku Secret Layer. But the newest one is Ghostbusters. Okay. And they are divided into two big camps right now for the Ghostbusters Secret Layer. You have the ones that are based more off of the live action Slimer and you have a whole set of cards that are all just Slimer cards and then there's ones based off of the old cartoon show. The one with the car? Not the one with the car. I know you <laughs> want it to be the one with the car. You 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 might actually get into magic if it was the one with the car. <laughs> You'd be like, "Wait, I need to go build a deck right now." <laughs> and then they also announced that they're doing a Chucky secret layer. Jesus Christ. Is there enough content? I mean, I guess there's been several movies and now TV shows, so maybe, but still. The thing is, secret layer drops, some of the secret layer drops, you don't need to make like a whole set, right? Like the the secret layer Slimer set is five cards. And the secret layer real Ghostbusters set is another five cards. Mm Mm-hmm. The secret layer Chucky set is six cards. Okay. Okay. That I guess that makes a little more sense. So they don't need to a, a ton of content to do a secret layer drop. It's different than when they do Universes Beyond, because Universes Beyond is also, you know, Magic the Gathering Fortnite, where they make like a whole set based around like they did a Fallout Secret Layer and they did a Fallout Universes Beyond, for example. Mm-hmm. And with Universes Beyond, it's like a whole set of cards. Sometimes with brand new cards that you know 
are based off of the set. Like when they create Mr. House, President and C- CEO, that is a whole new card that was created for Magic the Gathering. Secret Layer is specifically this card already existed and this card does exactly what the previous card did. We just slapped new art on it. Okay. Is it AI generated art? You know, they don't say it is. Uh, if they don't say it is, I'm assuming it is. <laughs> I need I'm going to need like disclaimers that come out that are essentially, you know, now without AI art, I I need that. I need that on my Wizards of the Coast products for me to be able to trust them. But 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 hold on. Even then, I'm not sure. Let me find the quote again, Baron. Hold on. But but they said that magic and D&D have been built on the innovation, ingenuity and hard work of talented people who sculpt these beautiful and creative games. And as such, we require artists, writers and, and creatives contributing to magic and D&D to refrain from using AI generative tools. Mm, OK, so OK, so then they're not using AI art. Yeah, there's no way. There's not another quote that could possibly counteract what they just said, was there? <laughs> you mean like we deploy it significantly and liberally internally as both a knowledge worker aid and as a development aid? Ouch. <laughs> Maybe they just meant their, you know, their, their, <laughs> the, 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 the people that they hire to, I don't know. <laughs> you mean like themes around using AI as an, to enable user generated content using AI to streamline new player introduction and using AI for emergent storytelling? Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> God damn it. We need to talk about something different. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Well, how about this? I, I I did just just recently find something. Okay. You ready? Mm-hmm. This is an article by uh Alex Weprin. Mm-hmm. And um I didn't read the whole article. I don't think I needed to. But the 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 headline to it, you ready? Lionsgate Inc. Fucking deal with Lionsgate. AI. <laughs> <laughs> Inks deal with AI firm to mine its massive film and TV library. You ready? The deal will see Runaway Train, a new AI model on Lionsgate's film and TV library, as the entertainment company uses the tech to, quote, develop cutting edge, c- capital efficient content creation opportunities. And they had the audacity to call it Runaway Train. Yeah. The fucking gall. <laughs> oh you, man you know what comes out tonight as as of day of recording agatha all along agatha all along agatha all along i'm gonna be excited to dig into that tonight let me tell you yeah let me tell you also that disney is on my fucking shit list as well but it's funny will, it's funny that find like where we're setting it. the bar like Disney actually clears it. <laughs> the bars on the fucking oh. floor. Oh, I, w- I want to be clear. I-, I said I'm going to watch it. Yeah. I didn't tell you where I was going to watch it. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I didn't uh, tell you where. Oh, man. When Disney is not the evilest corporation. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not the evilest corporation out there. But boy, howdy. It's, um, it seems like they're running a competition. To see who can be. Oh man, it's it's everybody trying to win capitalism. That's what it always is, right? It's it's who mm-hmm. can win the great game of capitalism. Yep, I don't get it. Did you manage to get out and see uh, Beetlejuice? Beetlejuice yet? I have not. I I mean I don't. I you know I'm not holding anything against it. I'm sure I could find something if I wanted to. But I'll be upfront. The original Beetlejuice was okay. Yeah. I I want to I want to be. You know, remind you that I am only goth adjacent. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of the, the stuff like that is like, it's fun, but I honestly you know. think the uh, the Broadway musical was better than both of the movies. Oh, yeah, that got a lot of hype, didn't it? I think I am going to go so far as to say that that Broadway musical is the whole reason why the sequel exists. I mean, they talked about doing it before the Broadway musical. Yeah, was a thing. they did. They did but it definitely the- it definitely pushed it over the line. Yes. Definitely got it across the finish line as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm still like, I know they talked about it, but it wasn't happening. I really, really think that it was the the musical that really pushed it. over. Oh, you, you, you know what else isn't happening? Huh. 
a season two of Time Bandits. Okay, did the first one come out? So it, it, it the reason you don't know about it is because it came out on Apple TV and who or, or Apple Plus oh. and who fucking has Apple Plus, right? But it got canceled fifty four days after the premiere. Ouch. Most of the reviews I read about the season one said that they don't even think that anyone who was involved with the show was a fan of the original movie. Okay. Which is kind of what we were concerned about in yeah. the first place. Yeah. So, you know, the, it, there's there's the good feeling of, oh, vindication, but then the bad feeling of, oh, I really did want that to be good. Fucking Taika. I want yeah. I want to I want to love him. I like I want to love his stuff. He's done a lot of really good stuff, but like he's very hit or miss. Yep. Yep. He um I I don't know. I kind of think that he he was really peaking there for a while artistically speaking, but then I just feel like he just started phoning shit in. It's like people just threw money at him and it's just like, "Oh, no, 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 no. My my dude does better on no budget." <laughs> Or people started throwing money. It was like, make a thing. And he's like, you know, I don't have any ideas left. Right. And they're like, yeah, but money. And he's like, yeah, money. You do have a point. I guess even though I don't have an idea, I will make the thing because money. At this point, I'm just bringing up little things because we don't have a lot of time left on this episode. And I don't know. These are these are things I wouldn't normally bring up because they wouldn't fill up, you know, a 15 minute segment. But fuck it. We got time. I did read, I, I don't know if you know this or not, I've been a big fan of Cobra Kai. Yeah, yeah. And, Absolutely. yeah, even before Cobra Kai, I liked the Karate Kid movies, and they are currently working on the next Karate Kid movie, which will include the cast of Cobra Kai, as well as the cast of the Karate Kid reboot with uh, Jackie Chan. And Ralph Macchio has expressed that... uh He's a little nervous about fight scenes he may have in the upcoming film with Jackie Chan. <laughs> Did he say why? Because he's fucking Jackie Chan. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, th that was my thought too. Was that it was fucking Jackie Chan? But I wanted to make sure that his head was in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> like he's like you. You think he's scared to punch an old man? <laughs> or or like one of those? Maybe he's. Uh, like specifically maybe he's afraid to, that he can't keep up or something like that i don't know but <laughs> yeah man no i think ralph macchio is very aware of the fact that he is not a martial arts expert mm -hmm. and that he is an actor that got put in a karate movie a long time ago right right and now he's going to have choreographed fight scenes with the jackie chan They'd be smart if they just let Jackie Chan choreograph them. I, I had just assumed they were. No, I, I say it kind of jokingly. They would be smart to have him do it, but if Jackie Chan choreographed it, there's no way anybody on that set could keep up. That's fair enough. Think, think of all like the choreography that he's done. It's always been with his company, like his company of of fighters. Yeah, or acrobats, or whatever you want to call them. I mean, um, he'll probably at least be doing that side of it because in his in his Karate Kid movie, they're not learning karate. They're learning Kung Fu in Jackie Chance. Yes. Yes. If they would have just called that the Kung Fu Kid and said it in the same world that I think that that would have been great. Sure. I think the fact that they called it the Karate Kid was kind of disrespectful. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. But yeah, I think he'll at least choreograph that half of it. Like, you know, like any any of like the students from his karate school, you know, if, if that's how they're doing it. And I also will give that when they were casting the kids for Cobra Kai, they went out and found like people who were proficient in martial arts. They didn't just go grab like some child actors. They found people who were, sure. you know, really good in martial arts. And I feel like some of those kids could keep up with some of Jackie Chan's choreography. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, the kids, definitely. But at the same time, I don't... Mm, Ralph Macchio, and God help me, I can't remember Billy his other name. There we go, thank you. I don't think that they should really be expected to keep up. No. You know what I mean? Because they are older guys. And anybody watching that show knows that they are... Okay, well, okay, at least Zapka, 
character is named what's his name? The character's name is Billy. No, um, yeah. fuck. Now you now, like I would have known if you hadn't asked the question. Yeah, Danny, Donnie, Danny. No, I feel like Danny is is Ralph you're Macchio's like, character. You're right. Fuck. You're thinking of Johnny Lawrence. Johnny. Johnny Lawrence and Daniel Larusso are the two character names. How was? I think Johnny should have been played by um, Keanu Reeves. Johnny Lawrence, Billy Zabka. Yep. Johnny oh. Lawrence should have been Keanu Reeves. <laughs> okay. Like way back when in the original movie. Yep. Or you think they should have like recast him once Cobra Kai came? No. Out? No, he should have been. He should have been in the original. <laughs> I don't think anybody knew who he was back then. Not that anybody knew who you know William Zabka was. But. Right. <laughs> now I have now no. Let me tell you this though. Right. Keanu Reeves was 19 years old in 1984, which is when Karate Kid came out. Sure. Right. He got his first role. In 1984, in a TV series called Hangin'. Okay. And he was 19 in that. In 1984, he could have easily passed for a high schooler. Oh, easily. At least as high school as they looked as well. Easily. And his name was Johnny in the in the show, or in the movie. Not in, not in Hangin', but it would have been Johnny in Karate Kid. So, there's yes, definitely... Everybody named- Everybody named John and Johnny should be Keanu Reeves as well. There is, there's definitely an alternate universe where Keanu Reeves is Johnny Lawrence. Holy fucking shit. I just realized his name is Jonathan Harker in Dracula. Yes. He can't get away from the name John. (laughs) That's his name in the Matrix, too. Is that official? Yes. Well, I, I'm Holy pretty sure shit. it is. I'm I, look. Holy I'd shit. have to look it up, but I'm pretty sure before he becomes Neo that his name is John. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> and then, of course, there's Wick, you know. No, it's it's Thomas Anderson. Thomas. Oh, uh, yep, you're right. You're right. I knew it was Mr. Anderson, but it was just like, that's, it's that son of a bitch. You're right. But there is still John Wick. There is still John, yes. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Why don't you email us? At casterskill at gmail.com. Let us know who your favorite Keanu Reeves John is. John Constantine. Oh, good one. <laughs> the <sequel's coming. laughs> Join us on the Discord. That's where all the fun stuff is happening. And we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye, bye bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Go find see a TTRPG other than DG. <laughs> <laughs>